I've asked uh, Seki to help me in the presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, so I will be presenting the preliminary findings from a project. Uh, it's a civic education project that is part of uh, Youth Leadership for Democracy or Youth Led, uh, which is a big program. It's a five year program. So we are part of uh, component three on civic education. And among the partners are the University of the Philippines and the Philippine Business for Education. So uh, what I'll be presenting would be the uh, project component that's part of, uh, that's being uh, conducted by De La Salle University. Uh, Youth-led is uh, in, being implemented by the Asia Foundation with the support of USAID. So let, let us proceed to the next slide. So just to share with you, uh, the objectives of this project uh, is to review and enhance the civic education curriculum in private schools and non-formal education programs in NGOs. So as I mentioned, uh, we are focused on examining uh, the programs, civic education programs of private schools and the private sector, as well as the non-government organizations. Uh, the University of the Philippines is the one examining the uh, curriculum modules of the public schools. Of course, the private schools are also following the, uh, the standards set by the Department of Education, but they have uh, more leeway in terms of uh, introducing uh, content areas and even in terms of the methodology. The second key objective is to contribute towards enhancing or improving awareness, knowledge, and action regarding civic rights, duties, and responsibilities among the youth to research and crafting new modules for junior high school, senior high school, and NGOs. Next slide. So this is the methodology. So uh, I, I'm presenting to you the, the research results, the preliminary results that will inform uh, module development. And these are the methods. We conducted key informant interviews. We conducted document collection and rapid inventory. We gathered data on a program, a book program background, training effects of civic education, strengths and gaps. Uh, the, these are from the the insights shared by our key informant interviews. So they include the administrators of uh, private schools, NGO leaders, and also uh, coordinators of the uh, junior and senior high school programs. So in terms of documents collected, we gathered uh, course and program outlines, curriculum maps, and syllabi learning modules and assessment tools. The rapid inventory consisted of uh, 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 asking for data on training, content, focus sectors, medium and mode of in instruction, youth education programs, and co-curricular activities. So we, we use uh, NVivo software in terms of uh, the qualitative content analysis. Next slide. So just to provide you with the, the project timeline. So uh, we, we've been doing this project for the past uh, nine months. So uh, we, we conducted data collection and develop partnerships. Uh, we've been uh, talking with various education uh, organizations, including the SEAP, uh, Catholic Educators Association of the Philippines, uh, the PEYAC or the Philippine Educational Assistance Committee, and the PACU or the Private Association of Colleges and Universities. We've also been uh, developing partnerships with uh, individual high uh, educational institutions that offer senior high school, including uh, Bicol University. So, so we actually inked that partnership with the 
with Bicol University. And, and so uh, we conducted this uh, preliminary analysis that I will share with you this morning. And uh, our, our module and curriculum specialist, uh, Lei Castillo, who is from De La Salle, Santiago Sobel, uh, developed a draft uh, module. In fact, she developed three modules, one for junior high school, for senior high school, and NGOs. So we'll also be doing uh, uh, the teacher training. Uh, we had a data validation activity last week, and we will proceed with module implementation and monitoring and evaluation. Next slide. So this uh, is the coverage in terms of the regions. So uh, I mentioned rapid inventory. So we went to uh, different regions. Uh, of course, we were hampered uh, by uh, protocols, health protocols. So we conducted it through Zoom. And so these are the regions that we covered. Uh, we we had uh, more than 100, uh, 100 uh, partner uh, institutions, including private schools and NGOs. Next slide. Okay, let me now show you the results of the our examination of the private school curriculum. Next slide. So social studies, uh, within the ecosystem of civic education in the K-12 curriculum is primarily located in the social studies learning domain. Although it does not preclude uh, the inclusion of civic education in the other subjects. So this is something that we are actually discussing, like some of the examples perhaps in mathematics can include content from the social studies, as well as the other learning areas. Uh, but uh, what we found out that primarily social studies is the key subject area where civic education is incorporated. Next slide. So if we take a look at the different grade levels from K to 12, there, there is content that is available at the various grade levels. So for me, this is very interesting since I, of course, I, 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 I went to, I, I got my basic education a long time ago and uh, look at the, the titles of these uh, uh, civic education areas. From in kinder, you have myself and others. So it's a learning period where the individual, uh, the individual Filipino is learning to connect himself or herself with others. So he or she is not alone in this world in terms of exercising rights as well as performing responsibilities. So grade one, myself, my school and family. So the sphere of uh, relationship is, is growing. And in grade two, you really have a broader sense. Of course, that's the competence or competency that is uh, pursued. My community uh, now and then. So it's even a sense of uh, history of the local community. On, in grade three, you have now a concept of a region, belonging to a region, the Philippine regions. Understanding the different Philippine regions, of course. Uh, grade four, the Philippines as a country. So you now begin to have a sense of uh, being, uh, being part of a country and a nation. So there is a cultural sense there of identity. In grade five, the formation of the Philippines as a state. So belo you belong now to a political community. So you are now... Uh, developing this concept of a citizen belonging to a state and a state as part of a bigger community. And now you begin in grade six to connect the state with the nation. So the state as a political entity uh, that collects taxes and that uh, 
uh, formulates and implements uh, laws and policies, but then you are part of a cultural entity called the nation. So that, therefore, the formation of concept of a nation state. And then the nation state, the Philippine nation state is part of Asia, in Southeast Asia, grade seven Asian studies, and Asia belongs to the world or is part of the world. So the developments of our country is part of world history. And grade nine, uh, of course, we, we understand the globe, we understand globalization, and we should understand economics, market development. And so with grade 10, you all have these notions of identity, whether political, cultural, economic, uh, you belong to a country, to a state, you are a citizen of the world and the earth. And so in grade 10, 11, and 12, you begin to uh, bring together all these concepts and use these concepts in understanding contemporary issues. Grade 11, understanding culture, society, and politics. So those different sense of uh, identity, you begin to bring it together in a way that you can develop insights and you can analyze what's happening around you. In grade 12, Philippine politics and governance. And I suppose in grade 12, you are you you're probably turning 18 and you can now vote. It uh, depends, of course, on the electoral cycle. And grade 12, community engagement. Next slide. So civic education in junior high school, uh, especially in contemporary issues. So we can divide it into four grade levels, uh, uh, grade phases or periods, grading, grading periods. In the first grading, you have environment and economy as content. Second grading, political and peace issues. Uh, third grading, human rights and gender, and fourth grading, civics and citizenship. Usually in civics and citizenship, we found out that what are tackled there is a combination of education issues and uh, citizenship issues. Next slide. In looking at the different uh, civic education modules used in private junior high schools, uh, as I mentioned, uh, private schools have more space in terms of introducing additional content areas. These are the things that we found out. The uh, focus, some of the focus areas are the role of citizenship in social change, uh, introduction of civic edu engagement models, the integration of Christian perspectives. Uh, as we know, private schools have, are have uh, Christian uh, affiliations and community engagement framework uh, is there, as well as a number of schools linking their uh, content to SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and the inclusion of human rights. In terms of the curricular modules, private schools use diverse approaches. Uh, including uh, case studies, simulation, uh, practical research, uh, poetry, video presentation, role playing, social media posts, analysis of policies and laws, and the and proposing civic and community activities. However, there are all there are some schools that do not have co-curricular activities. Next slide. Uh, okay, it's civic education in senior high school, in the senior high school core subject, which is understanding culture, society, and politics. This subject has eight subtopics. One response to social, political, and cultural change that, that is divided into eight topics. And that amounts to eight hours. And uh, the topics that are included are inclusive citizenship and participatory governance, 
new forms of social media and social networking, social movements, including environmentalism and feminism. So this, uh, this result indicates the lack of extensive civic education in the existing curriculum of senior high school in core subjects. As you notice, uh, it's only eight hours. So apparently in this subject area, understanding culture, society, and politics, there's more uh, discussion of the culture and societal part rather than uh, the political and citizenship part. Hence, if uh, senior high school students do not go to UMS, this would be their last exposure on civic education because under UMS, there is the Okay, we'll transition to the next slide. Okay, let's uh, look more closely at the division in terms of the number of R's in understanding culture, society, and politics. So you have Philippine politics and governance. Uh, first, uh, th this is taught in the first semester for 80 R's and community engagement, solidarity, and citizenship. Uh, also 80, 80 hours for second semester. So we noted that uh, in Philippine politics and governance, the focus is on politics and governance and not enough on citizenship. So only one thirteenth of the topics are primarily citizenship. And in the discussion on community engagement, solidarity, and citizenship, it's predominantly on community solidarity and not on citizenship. So apparently, there is a need to introduce more content on the citizenship portion. So baka kailangan talaga na pagbigyan ng pansin na yung citizenship aspect kasi nga, we always say or there's always advocacy. Let's have voters' education uh, prior to elections, no? During the campaign, they vote wisely. But uh, maybe it should be done prior to that, no? In, in a continuous manner. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, I just have a few minutes left. Uh, so in terms of the gaps, uh, there is a lack of time spent on civic education. Uh, so we, we use the NVivo content software to, to do this thematic analysis. So in terms of differing module contents, okay, there are differing module contents and the focus veers away from civic education. So uh, given this understanding, uh, as I, I've been uh, emphasizing, we need to bring back civic education. Uh, it's there in the curriculum, but in the content area. Some schools have no co-curricular activities. There's a need for teacher training on civic education. There, are lack, there is a lack of avenues for civic education or civic engagement and minimal interaction with the social sectors. So, eto mga direct coach yung nasa kanan, no? Uh, one teacher said, the struggle is in the preparation of materials and modules, development of the curriculum, and even in translation. Training is important. There is a need for support mechanisms. Okay, on the right-hand portion, uh, you can see a quote from one of our informants. This or civic education should not be taught in grade 10 alone. Grade 7 pa lang may particular topic na about civic engagement. For senior high school, it can be added to all strands, and that would be much better. Okay, so good uh, recommendations, uh, especially because the K-12 program is being reviewed at this time. Next slide. Okay, I'll, I'll go quickly now. The results in terms of our uh, research 
on NGOs. Next slide. So uh, there's a variety of topics. So this is more of a non-formal civic education. As you can see, the variety of topics you can find from uh, ko nga, voter education. So uh, it's being carried by, uh, by NGO advocacy groups and uh, anti-sexual harassment, uh, youth empowerment programs, human rights education. Next slide. In terms of the sectors, uh, because NGOs, of course, are voluntary groups, they they work with various sectors. You can see this in terms of the uh, focus sectors. Next slide. In terms of mode of learning, uh, since we are in a pandemic, so you, you notice on the left side, uh, blended learning is the key or the main mode of learning. Uh, of course, for NGOs, uh, especially in those in the local communities, they also do face-to-face, -face, of course, using uh, or following health protocols. In terms of program type, you can see on the right side, uh, workshops and seminars, information campaigns. Okay, so those are the uh, types of uh, uh, civic education that is rolled out. No? Usually, mga one to two days workshop or seminar. Next slide. Okay, we just have these uh, quotes uh, from the NGO key informants. We have various development partners and a strong network of local organizations. And our programs are based on the needs of the locality. Uh, you can see on the right side of this uh, screen, our volunteers are very diverse. This allows us to have a multidisciplinary approach in the conduct of training activities. And the topics are selected based on the feedback from participants. As you know, uh, it's very demand-driven, no? Yung kailangan ng mga different sectors, different uh, communities. As you can see, the fluidity and adaptability of our materials contributed to the effectiveness of our programs. Next slide. On the gaps... Okay, uh, pinapatapos na yata ako. Ayan, yeah. <laughs> okay, mga uh, last slide na actually yung kanina. The weakness stems from the lack of a structured program. And we realize the need to have a playbook and a manual to guide the implementation process. No? Uh, so normally nga, wala naman silang modules except for some groups. So what they have are yung conference program, workshop program. And I, I know this because we also do this uh, kind of training. And uh, yeah, uh, it's difficult to find funding for our projects because uh, these are voluntary efforts. Uh, next slide. Okay, the, this is my last slide. Uh, these are the next steps that we are undertaking in this project. So, uh, developing co-curricular modules and training manuals. When we say co-curricular, ano na yan, no? additional na yan. So pwedeng magkaroon ng mga conference or magkaroon ng guest speaker. Iniisip ko nga, baka ang dapat na guest speaker yung mga NGOs. No? Kasi marami na silang specific content area. And then, uh, teachers and facilitators training and private school and NGO partnerships. So thank you very much. Uh, last slide ko yung Thank you.